الصلاة خير من النوم. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm your host Kamal Al Makki. How can you love and care for everyone in your community, even those who are haters, snakes? those who backbite, how can you care for everyone and why is that important? That's our topic this week on Amongst the Few. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. So why is this topic important? This topic is important because the believer is not just the one who believes in the existence of Allah, but the believer is the one who knows Allah as a result of a relationship, a personal relationship that they have with Allah. And this is a relationship that impacts him or her positively. So where do you sense that positivity? It's in your thoughts and your attitudes and your relationship with others. And today we want to focus on your relationship with others. Well, we all know the hadith that none of you truly believes until you love for your brother or for your sister what you love for yourself. But realistically, how many people really do that? How many people really love for their brother or for their sister what they love for themselves? How many of us have this one person in the MSA or in the message that we don't like? Or they just rub you the wrong way. Every time you see them, you're a little irritated or something like that. You know, Loving people and caring for people is one of the fruits of being religious. All right, one more time. One of the fruits of being religious is loving and caring for people. And it's contrary to what some people think that, you know, being religious is you have this serious face or this frown on your face and this is a good religious person. He's strict and he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was the Prophet ﷺ like that? And he was definitely the most religious and the best human being. But was he always frowning? Was he always angry? Or is this what it means to be religious? Even Umar anhu, people sometimes misunderstand his personality. And they think that he's always frowning all the time. He's always mean and angry all the time. But that was not the case if you analyze his biography carefully. The Prophet وسلم, he was described by his companions, وَكَانَ هَاشًا بَاشًا لَا تَلْقَاهُ إِلَّا مُبْتَسِمًا That he was easy going, he was relaxed, and you never see him except that he's smiling. This is how the religious person is. How can you love all the believers in your community? Not being annoyed or irritated or bothered by anybody in the community. Have you ever read a narration where one of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, do you like me? Or, you know, do you have a problem with me? Anything like that? Because the Prophet ﷺ showed everybody that he cared for them. Alright, so I want to share a fantastic hadith with you. This is an authentic hadith. And Nabi ﷺ said, Al mu'min ya'lafu wa yu'laf wa la khayr fi man la ya'laf wa la yu'laf. Fantastic. The Prophet ﷺ says that the believer, okay, the mu'min, the believer is the one that is loving and lovable. And there is no good in he or she that is not neither loving nor lovable. This is really fantastic. Where do people get the idea that the religious person, you know, dislikes this guy because, you know, this guy smokes and he hates that guy because that guy does this or that, that sin? Where is the mercy for the believers? I'm going to give you five pointers, quick pointers on how to care for everybody. Like when you meet someone in the masjid or in the MSA, how can you really care for them or really begin to like them? First thing, when they greet you, you turn to face them, just like the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Turn to face them, shake their hand, give them your full attention, face them with your face, look them in the eye and greet them well. You know, you can imagine that if you greet someone like this without even looking at them, you can't really care for them like that. So that was number one. Number two, Genuinely be interested in them and in their situation. When you have no interest in someone and you don't care if they're sick, if they're healthy, if they have problems, monetary or otherwise, then you couldn't possibly care for that individual. Number three, and this is a very strong one, try to think of the problems that they have and feel mercy towards them, have pity on them. Now I'm going to tell you a personal experience. In the month of Ramadan, so I was spending time in the masjid for Atikaf, so people would come to me with their problems. And you started to know so many personal problems of every individual. Some people have so many problems 
that you cried just from hearing their problem. So this guy came to me with a problem and I felt really bad for him and everything and, and I felt mercy towards this person. Then another guy comes to me and tries to get me to hate that guy and tries to mention some of the sins that that guy can, you know, he does this sin, he does that sin, and wants me to hate that individual. But you know what? I couldn't hate that individual because his problems were so severe. So I could feel nothing but mercy. And I guarantee you, if that guy who wanted me to hate him knew the problems that that man had, he would have mercy for him and not hate him himself. Point number four. Part of caring for the believers is that if they ask you to make dua for them, then you make dua for them. You know, this is a thing that has become a way we close conversations. Keep us in your du'a, please make du'a. And nobody does that, or very few people realistically do that. But if you really care for the believers, you know their problems, you have mercy on them like we said, then you genuinely want to make du'a for them if you care for them. So if someone tells you make du'a, you make du'a for them. Point number five, and this is the last point. If there's someone that you don't like in your community, in your masjid, or in your MSA, buy them a gift and give it to them and that will help you like them. How does that work? Inshallah, I'll explain that in one of the future episodes, Inshallah. So perhaps you can understand how you can care for the believer. But what about the snakes in the community? People who backbite, backstab, make problems and create issues and rifts and divisions between people. Can you care for them? There's actually a very simple formula. You feel sorry for them. How? Because Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gave you the better position. He didn't make you a snake. You're not a backbiter. You're not someone who goes around creating problems and thinking you're smart in, in the process of doing so. But they're in that position. And easily could have been reversed. Allah could have made them the better people. You could have been the snake of the community. You could have been the one that's always backbiting, creating problems between people. But Allah Azza wa gave you the better position, the higher position. So every time you meet the snake, instead of hating him for being the snake, or hating him for being a problem or troublemaker, you feel bad for them. That this is, this is your life. Here you are making problems in the community and you think you're smart on top of that. But Allah Azza wa preferred me over you and so therefore I don't have to hate you. I feel bad for you. I feel sorry for you. I can even make dua for you to improve. So now we've got the believers. We've got the snakes, the troublemakers, the bad backbiters, the haters as they say. What about now the non-Muslims? Can you care for the non-Muslims? And this is really a simple question. Did the Prophet ﷺ care for Abu Talib? Did the Prophet ﷺ care for the Quraysh? When the people beat the Prophet ﷺ and pelted him with stones and rocks and he was bleeding and then the angel came to him, he said, "In shi'ta an utbiq alayhim al akhshabain." He said, if you like, I can basically sandwich them between the two mountains, crush them between the two mountains. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, no, because I hope that from their ancestors or from their loins will come people who will worship Allah and not associate anyone with Allah. Can you imagine saying something like this? What is that? That's care from the Prophet ﷺ. He cared for people who just a few hours ago were pelting him and causing him to bleed. And this was one of the most difficult days in his life as he said to Aisha anha. You know if that was me, I would say yes, yes I like that, please do that. Crush him between the two mountains. And if you can pull that one that you did with the people of Lut, you know, pick him up all the way to the heavens, turn him upside down, smash him down, you know, some rain, some hail, something like that on them. Yeah, but the Prophet ﷺ didn't do that because he was caring and he cared for people. I want to close by telling you about this. The Prophet ﷺ cared for people and that's why he was the best da'ya. You know, when I used to live in Virginia, one of the brothers, he was one of the best du'at, most active and best results. And he would always say, these are my people. I care for them. I love them. And that's why he was better than the rest of us in da'wah. So much more to say, so little time. I'm going to have to end it here. But love people, be caring. Try to appreciate people first before you're irritated first. Try to like people first before you dislike them first. That's all the time we have. Like I said, Brother Muhammad Hassan comes back next week. He is our creator, He is our sustainer, and He is the one who has power over all.